So welcome to another episode to Con Conversations That Matter in the wisdomfactory.net. I'm Heidi Hernlein, I'm here in Italy and I'm doing conversations with people who have really very important things and wisdom to share with the world. And this year I was in South Africa in the Integral African Conference and there I met Caritas Ovidzera and she shared her story, her journey as a refugee when the Rwanda uh, genocide was going on. And so she is kind enough today to stay with us and to talk about the situations of refugees, because I think Europe has forgotten what it is like to be a refugee. As we can see here in Italy, where I live, where saving people seems to be a war crime, according to our Savini um, uh, chief, who has to decide everything. And even, I mean, in Germany, they have begun to accept refugees with open heart, and now the right parties are so against it. And, you know, we want to know what it is behind it. How is it that they could forget that in World War II, many, many, many Germans, Jewish, but not also not Jewish, also people who tried to help other people, had to flee from their country and were so glad to find somebody who would help them. Did we forget all that? So my question is, how can we bring it back into our minds that being a refugee is not just for fun, that you decide to go in another country and live from other people's money? Oh, how wonderful. That's definitely not. But our Western countries seem to think like this in some way. So today, I want to explore that with Caritas. And before we do that, could you please just tell a little bit about you because your story, which you gave in the conference, I have published in another video so people can see the whole story if they want to. But just where are you now and what, what is going on in your life now and the, the little bit of a background. Thank you very much, Heidi, to give me this opportunity to come and discuss with you about uh, refugees. And it was a pleasure meeting with you. Uh, we can chat and uh, you always welcome to ask me whatever you would like to ask. I will provide you with what I think about it. Um, in fact, uh, my name is Caritas Uizera. I'm from Rwanda and uh, I'm a refugee in South Africa for 22 years. When I arrived in South Africa in 1997, uh, I just struggled. What I can tell you is that being a refugee is, is something which people can say that is a, a life which we bring ourselves on us, which is not true. Uh, to arrive to South Africa, anyway, I thank God for being alive because at least me, I managed to be in South Africa. And um, to be where I am now. Saying that refugees, what is a refugee or who is a refugee? For my case, I fled my country because of the genocide which took place in 1994. It was a very sad moment. And I have never thought in my life that I was going to be, to belong to any other country I really loved my country, but it became something else, and I had to leave and to be given a new name. No one at the moment don't know my name except saying, oh, the refugee from Rwanda, refugee from Rwanda, or the foreigner. Some they think that I'm a foreigner who came to look for life, but we are uh, people who used to have a country, who have names, who have nationalities. For example, there is a way they ask you, what is your nationality? I cannot call myself 
Rwanda, and since I'm not a Rwanda, I've read the country. I can never call myself a South African since I don't have any citizenship after 22 years where you apply and there is no feedback. But it's very sad that European people don't know the name of a refugee, don't know the meaning of a refugee when they have been through the same situation, which is also the same for South Africa, where they had many South African who came to live in exile for years and years, and they came back when there was a new power. Uh, but they don't remember, they don't remember because they have also forgotten about uh, being in exile, the meaning of that. Um, a refugee uh, in Europe, I know that many have been, they had to come illegally. Yes, people, they come illegally because when you free your country, you don't have any other way. Most of the time, including myself, you don't have a passport, you don't, you leave everything behind. You cannot sleep on the road for two months, three months, four months. And the way sometimes it's raining, it's, the, you don't have to keep, a way to keep stuff and they say, I have a passport, I have what? So you use whatever way you can use to, uh, to get a better life. When you look for a better life, you use any way you can find. I remember when we had to climb a track and they, they cover us with uh, goods to just to manage to arrive where I am. It's the same, those one using the boat to go to Europe to find a, a way for living because they look around, they see that there is no other places they can go to. And they decide it is between death and life. If you stay where you are, it's death. But you say, I'm going, if I drown, I'm going, it's the way to be. And if I don't, I think I will thank God. So mm -hmm. I know that um, people, they come without papers, but the way they are received, it's a very, very, very sad. Very sad yeah. because you see people, um, they sleep on the road, they have small children, they don't have food or where to sleep. And they really, that life which is not comfortable for them for, and it, it, become, it becomes like, there are people who, who are uh, like criminals. And uh, when you don't have what to do, that's why even crime in, increases because they say, what else can I do? I don't have where to sleep. I don't have what to, what to eat. I don't have what to, where to sleep. So they decided to look for another life. And uh, if they, were treated um, in a human way, they can become better people. They can, I can see from my side, the people who are, uh, who are now coming and they don't have what to do. They get involved in the crime because they are looking for life and they don't have any other thing to do. What I can say for a refugee, uh, I'm mixing both European and the African. I can say the African way because uh, you see that organization in charge of uh, refugees. They, for example, the time I came to South Africa, I have never seen the UNHCR. We went there, there is even that big fence is closed completely, you cannot get inside. If you, they will send a security to ask, what do you want from outside? And when you say, I'm looking for help, no one will come back to you. And now we had to go to look for other help from the churches, from, we even went to the places where you are not supposed to be. I remember that we use, I, 
to feed my children, I used also to put on um, Muslim clothes. Because <laughs> we know Muslim, they are wanted to help. And you go, you say, you even you change your name in a Muslim name so they can help you. So that's how bad it is because we really got disappointed when even the government didn't come to us and help us. We were going to get for our, the papers and those papers, you can't even get them because you have to pay for them. You don't have money. What are you going to do? You have to bribe everyone. People with money from other places, they will come, they will get the paper. You go there for a week, a month, without getting a Islam seeker paper. So that's how bad things are. And there is no one who can fight for you. There is a, and you try also to say, if give me a, a letter saying that you can't help, so I can look for other places where I can settle, go for the settlement. And no one is no one who want who need will to wish to give it to you. So it is really very tough. It is a a complicated situation where you have to help yourself. And if by God will you survive or you or you just suffer. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yes. I was thinking mm -hmm. about the European situation. There was a division between East and West Germany and many people, not as many certainly as, uh, as Rwanda, but, and there was no war, but many people from the East wanted to flee into the West and they risked their lives too. Many of them were killed uh, by uh, passing the border <laughs> illegally, or some of them made it I... under the earth, others just tried to climb the fences, but the fences were always shooting, automatic shooting, and then there were dogs, uh, uh, patrols all the time, and so we have forgotten that we had, even inside Germany, we had refugees coming over to the other side, and you know, I can't understand that. That was 89 when, uh, when Germany should have been unified. And now even exactly in the countries where the refugees came from in this part of Germany, there is now most hate against refugees from other countries. You know, that's mm -hmm. absurd in many, many, many ways. And in this case, East Germany, yeah, you you didn't want to to go along with the ideology, but you could live somehow if you kept your mouth closed. So it was not as in your case that was a threat for life, as you told us in in your story how how dangerous it was to go on on the streets and to find uh, the way out, you know, and where to go. And then you went. You told us, and then you, you saw you couldn't go there, and then you went some other way, and try yeah. to find a way to get out. So we, we cannot imagine how that is. And that's the reason why I really want to, to talk to you because hopefully you can convey by still <laughs> being a testimony of, 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 of the, those experiences while we seem to have forgotten everything. Um. I saw the refugees from uh, Syria who were going to Europe. I, I'm telling you, I cried. I said, oh, I can understand what they are going through. Because I saw how children are crying. They are separated with their parents. And each one is running. Some, they are dying on the, their way. Others, they are mistreated. And I said, what world are we living in? Because running from from the danger, which is just coming to your door, it's something which no one can understand except the person who has been through that. It is something which you can consider that people are human beings, and is the red blood like all of us? We have a red blood and. In fact, we should have mercy on them and understand what they are going through, accommodate them. 
and they show them love because many of them, they even finish by having depression, by getting high, uh, that very high, high stress, which lead them to suic uh, committing suicide and doing things which they are not supposed to do because they are really, they are really um, suffering. I saw how they are shooting at them, how they put barriers, how they called the army to come to with armed uh, people to come to around them, to surround them and showing them that you cannot go over this place. It's not really a human, the humanity which we should show to people. A refugee is, in, I'm sure that uh, there is no one, no one who can really wish to be in a foreign country. There is no one who can really wish to leave everything behind and they come from scratch to sleep in a center or what, unless if there is a big, big reason which can push you to do that. So um, I would really like to ask each and everyone from those European countries that that is not life which those people have wished to live. That is a life which has been forced because of a very critical situation which happened in their countries. And also there is a change of behavior which someone can develop because of the situation he or she has been through. And that time is the time now to accommodate them, to just show them that, show them love, tell them that they belong to somewhere, that they, they have been born. They have been born like all of us. There is no one who descended to, from heaven and they fall on the earth or someone who came from the soil and come, came up. It is a situation where each and every one, you a refugee is also a person who a person who was born and who wanted to grow and become someone, but situation has changed. So that it is, a, I think it needs some education to educate people. Who are these people running to us? These are the people who need help. These are the people who need attention. These are the people who really, if you accommodate them and train them and they give them something to do, they will, one day they will become better people. They will become like those people who are, who they are running to. Yes. I, I need to say that at the beginning, uh, there were many people, for instance, in Germany who were embracing them and, uh, uh, and were happy that, especially from Syria, when the people came from Syria. And uh, there are still many people who help them, you know. But the public opinion seems to be poisoned by those who think that these foreign people take away their jobs or take away their richness or whatever, you know. So, um, yes, educate them and also make them realize that people who have lived a situation like this have probably post-traumatic stress disorder. They have maybe behaviors which are not optimum, apart from the fact that they are now in a different culture and nobody tells them how to behave in this different culture. Nobody really takes them by the hand and says, now you are here, here are things like this, and gives them the attention to show them how they are expected to, to behave, you know. They, they are wondering why they don't behave like us. Logically, first of all, because they come from different cultures. So you need to, to tell them that, and not only tell them like a teacher says, you have to blah, blah, but in a gentle way, by appreciating where they come from. That's what I so much liked uh, coming to South Africa and being on the tour and also on the conference. I had no idea 
about all these things, you know. Uh, I've never been in Africa before, but it really has opened my mind to to you people, let's say, you know, from another mm -hmm. co continent, from another culture. And I was amazed. So we need to do that. You for us and we for you and uh, to, to, to open our minds for people of other cultures, of other habits, let's say, instead of saying, oh no, they are, you know, but it's very easy to do. So yes, education is good. And I hope part of it we will do today. To, to talk about these things. <sighs> yeah, and to remind us that, that we are all human beings and that when you have a stress, I mean, even, you know, when your husband dies, uh, that's stress enough and you feel depressed mm -hmm. for a year or something. It happened to me lately, you know, my husband Same died study. a year ago. And you are not the same as you were before. But this is sort of a minor uh, problem, let's say, then when your life is really threatened, when you, you have to fear to be shot every, every day, wherever you put your feet. So imagine how that would be if it happens to you. And then please, people, do understand that peop other people maybe are a little bit shy or even sometimes uh, explode in certain uh, moments when they are reminded of, of what has happened to them. I mean, the triggers, they are everywhere, you know. And so we need to have an understanding for that. And first of all, I think we need to in some way emotionally connect with people who have the need to leave their own country, which they never would have thought they would need to. And by the way, it could happen to every one of us. Who knows what is in this in the future? So oof, that was my you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right, because people they come there from different cultures. You cannot say that someone who is going to be a refugee is someone who is educated or uneducated or illiterate or what. There are all types of people, people who don't know them. Who don't who have never seen those modern things which are in European countries, and that is the opportunity just to teach them to educate them because I can understand most of them maybe they are very upset because they see that they are people from the rural area, but everyone has got different cultures, different views, different everything. But we must accommodate each and every one. We don't know where we can end because every time in life, life is changes any time. The situation I'm in, I've never thought that I've been in a country where you'll be isolated from, you don't have any siblings, you are alone, and you don't have anyone to go to visit and to see and to chat to. But you get used to it, as you said, that um, it is a life-changing thing, which can change you in a positive way or in a negative way, according to how the situation is facing you. And it is really something which I you cannot judge and say, you, and it just and. Um, estimate a person and say this is a useless person, is a refugee, is a, there are even other names which they give to them that the people who jump the fences, who many names, names which are not good names. And you will see that no one cares about you because the only thing that you are a foreigner in is someone's else country. So it is a really very sad that many people they just think that um, they have created in a iron the iron is in an iron thing which you cannot change which will remain the same and they don't think that mm, we are made from soil <laughs> and the soil is always one day heavy rain can come and wipe everything is not something which you can wish, but uh, European people uh, during the 
we had World War One and Two. They went through a lot. We had, they were different views which people were fighting for, and the people they had to leave their places and go to other places. Others they were in jail, and others they really suffered a lot. But uh, I can say that maybe the new generation, if it was possible that they take the new generation who live a, a very easy life, that things, um, they, in fact, they say that the world is it, turning, it turns around and the, we never know, we never know everything is possible. Everything is possible even if you, for example, you say that someone who has been in exile and went to prison for 27 years, I don't want to say the names here, <laughs> and afterwards becoming someone very important. That's how the world is turning and the things that can arrive to each and everyone. But we must always avoid that it happens if we can. Yeah. And I mean, uh, we have the chance in life to grow that maybe um, as a young person, we are wild and want to do, I don't know what. And then we realize that uh, as, as the person you were, were talking about, then they often people by, uh, by having a not pleasant, let's say, um, experience, they change their mind and become uh, aware of what being human means. And I think when people have the life too pleasant and too easy, they get involved with things which are not really important, you know, and they get offended by little things and, and get arrogant and, and think themselves better than others. And this is a sort of a mindset that then uh, creates this rejection of otherness. I always say, for instance, when people talk about racism, I always say racism doesn't exist. Otherness-ism exists. Everything which is other is, uh, uh, is rejected. And this is a human uh, trait, a very primitive human feature. But I mean, we are old enough as humanity that we can go out of that and recognize the beauty in the other humans. And fortunately, there are a lot of people also on the other side who do that and who are trying to create peace and trying to create connections. So we are sort, in, in, sort of in a battlefield between the good forces and, and the bad forces, let's say. And we hope that the good forces win, but we never know. And we can end up you know, also by climate change, we can end up that uh, we cannot feed I I us, us anymore because we don't have water or we have too much water or whatever uh, will happen. So we, I think people who are uh, denying refugees the being decent human beings and uh, people who need and who deserve the respect of other people, I think they forget that they are not as secure as they seem to be, because the only thing which is sure that there is no security in life. So, yeah, I know that it really refugees they really um, suffer. I can see um, most of the time also there is the abuse, especially mm -hmm. the small children and the. Women and the women, all female people who are really very abused, and those who are not abused, like um, they really suffer a lot. For example, I know children who can not go to school because they can't afford the school fees, and there is no one who care about that. There is no one who say I can help someone who. For example, prefer to go to buy maybe, um, a, 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 for example, if you take like a school which is like 50 US dollars per year, and the, that parents of a refugee who cannot pay for that book, but uh, another person who is supposed to help is buying maybe a book which is like 200 
US dollars. <laughs> that it is. It is you educate yourself, but you have forgotten someone who need only a quarter of what you need to do to go to school and uh, become someone else, not to become someone who is going now to break the houses because it doesn't have something to eat. But uh, I don't know if uh, in Europe, because the the situation which happened in the last century uh, is like a history and if forgotten, if there will be another time where they will think, can we see how we can help these people how we can accommodate these people and also make them achieve something in their lives. That is really something which each and everyone can wish, which can happen and people, I know that is, I cannot put everything in general. I know there are people who are really still human and who are, just caring about those people who really accept and even share their will with it to give it for helping refugees. But those who really don't care and even plan to do meetings to ban them and to mistreat them, what is it going to happen to them? So that is those who we can really maybe if we as someone who is doing integration and everything, and he communicate, send the messages around the world, and he explain to them what is going on. I'm sure that it can help. I don't deny that there are people who are just fleeing their country for a way to run away from the poverty and everything. Those they are there, but can they? be able to select who is a refugee and who is not a refugee, who need help, or those who need to be deported, who just came for other reasons. That's the big problem which is there because they don't know how to do selection yeah. and they check and they do interviews and what. I remember when we were coming to South Africa, there are people who were not Rwandans and they were going that they those are the ones who received all attention, who don't even know what happened in Rwanda, even people, local one, who use that name and they said we are from Rwanda. And those ones, they have even been resettled to United States, to Canada. And they, they are not even Rwandans. I don't know how they get hold of those things. And us, who needed that, stayed behind. No one cares about us. That's how it is because they don't know how to select, or oh, is it the corruption? Is it those things happening around the way? You can even apply for the settlement and the, when your dossier has succeeded, you are ready to go and they, someone else will go under your name and because it has paid the money to the people, this is really things which are very uh, upsetting and which are but we yeah, are, which yeah. is very discouraging. Yeah, yeah, but it happens, it happens. And I imagine in South Africa, even more than uh, in Germany, but also or in our countries, uh, it happens there too. I know in Germany, uh, they try to make a selection, but then they, they, they do st things like uh, the American president separate, uh, want to send away the children or want to send away the parents and something. But I have to say they are, uh, private people, for instance, who had a family of refugees in their little village and they sh were about to be sent away, then they create initiatives, they uh, create petitions and collect, um, um, how do you say, uh, names who, who uh, and I always sign these things because when I hear that the person is behaving perfectly, is integrated in the, in the, in the new country and, and will be sent away for no reason, you know, that's no. I mean, if you send away somebody who is behaving very, very badly, I can also understand. But if a person is, is integrating and is willing to collaborate and willing to do, how can you send them away? And how can you 
separate parents from children? And, you know, that's, that is the question of um, administrations who have begun to be too much on the law, on the rules, too much obeying the rules and the heart is forgotten. You know, we need to, to re, I don't want to say to bend the rules, but to uh, interpret the rules in a heartfelt way and not just bang, you know, mm. because of some, some reason you have to go away. So uh, this is good that there are private people who are organizing help for single people and they often succeed in their endeavors, you know, they collect a million, um, how do you say, sign, sign ups of, of people and then they give it to the, to the officials and then something can happen. It's a sort mm. of, let's say, bribery, but bribery. in a good way. Mm. The politicians or the, the administration see then that there is something, some force behind that they cannot anymore do as they like because it comes out. This is the good thing, by the way, with the internet, that things are likely to be seen today. You cannot do any more like 30 years ago, something happens in the village and nobody knows about it. Now they have their little videos and make videos or send a tweet or something out. And so that's my hope, that the bad things by these possibilities of being spread will diminish because people get exposed when they do bad things. So, True. And True. people get maybe encouraged when they see the, the good things happen. So yeah. I'm really glad that you made it. So can you tell me how, how that was then? How you, you, you passed in several countries before you came to South Africa. And then what, what I learned in South Africa, that South Africa is full of refugees much fuller than we Europeans, and we complain. <laughs> Absurd. And how is it that you cannot be then um, legally? Why I, I, Do you still have the status of a refugee after more than 20 years? How is that? Uh, at the moment, I received the permanent residence, uh, but the permanent residence uh, after 22 years, it is not also something which you can use and get the same right as other people like citizens. Because, for example, our documents are different, like um, our ID numbers are different, uh, everything to know who you are. And if you apply for a passport, you have a, a different color, and a, which is not uh, acceptable. Because when, for example, they say... Um, citizenship, citizenship, they put Rwanda. And when you go to apply for a visa, they said, why are you applying a visa in South Africa when you are from Rwanda? And we have those travel documents which are don't go anywhere. No way, you cannot travel. Like my daughter wanted to go for to Indonesia with other colleagues. They refused. They said that document doesn't, is not acceptable in Indonesia. It's not a, and the, like the example I was telling you that to apply for a visa, you, they just keep it, they check, they, it's, it's not something really good to possess. Yeah, after 22 years, you, you, are, you are not, you don't have any nationality. You are just flying around, <laughs> is what I can say. But... We are still breathing. What is it? that is important? Yeah. Yeah, that that's mm. true. It's important, but it's uh, in some way uh, in indecent that you don't get a, a, a how can you say a place where you can relate to as your home country. So you don't have a passport. I have a travel document. Yeah, that's the travel document which I have, uh, and. Uh, I, I use it for traveling, except that maybe if a, a visa others, they can get five days, me, it can take like a month to apply for it, yeah, to apply for a visa, because they need it first to send it to check if it, maybe you are haven't done a genocide, you haven't done anything, yeah, that's the 
how it is, but I have a passport, a passport travel document. Mm -hmm. But you said when you need to go to, to London, uh, to England very soon, there was a, a problem with that? Yeah, we applied for visa. Those who we applied with, they received their visas. Mine is still there. I'm still waiting. Maybe they are still checking and everything. And if the document which we gave, they are the same. We were given by the WEC. Yeah, by the way, they are all the same, but yeah, they, maybe they are still checking everything. So you risk not to be able to go and do your, uh, what was it? Um, I'm well, still waiting. Uh, it is in September. I'm still waiting. And if, let's see if they are, it say yes or no. If they, maybe they say no. I don't know if I put a dispute or what, but I'm still waiting. Yeah. But you know, and this is another thing which Europeans and uh, the Westerners can not really relate to because we go into a plane and go wherever we want. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, that's it's, the problem. Yeah, and you are sort of locked into where you are and have a yeah. long mm. time of... of application process and you, you are not sure if you can go where you need to go or not. Yeah, we are locked, but yeah, we push and see. I, I, I'm praying hard that maybe they can consider that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are praying yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what would you um, suggest the future of humanity or of, let's only say our countries and your country, how could we in the ideal way come to better terms? Or your continent, let's say in our continent, black and white. How, mm -hmm. I mean, this is in America, uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's in one continent, the, the, and they still think it is racism, you know, that's, uh, as I said, for me, it's just, you are different and that's why I don't want you. <laughs> how can we uh, overcome that <clears throat> all of us we have to fight for peace and uh, always promote peace not uh, whatever we say whatever we do we promote something we, uh, which is really going to bring harmony to bring unity understanding love and to consider all of us as the people of God, and also that we, we are human beings, and you, it doesn't matter if you are black, white, Indian, or Asian, or whoever you are, it doesn't matter who you are. We, we are on this earth, and everyone came on this earth for a reason, and that reason is what we have to fulfill, because we need really to leave behind a very good legacy and say, and the, if you leave, if you need to even need to leave this, if someone will say, oh, I will remember you because of this, because of that, but not I remember you because of promoting the speech of hate, promoting uh, segregation, killings, crime, or whatever. And that we can always help each other if we don't have something we have more than what we need. I help, we help someone who is needy, who is less fortunate than I am. So that is what I can wish that each and everyone can consider the person next door, the person, not even next door, wherever the person is. It doesn't matter wherever you, you, you see someone who's suffering. I'm in South Africa. If you see someone in Somalia, someone in Sudan, or even in, in Rwanda, where I come from, there are children who cannot eat, who cannot go to school, who, people who c have just to eat one meal and that one meal is not even enough for the family. So we must be human and consider other people with the way we consider ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. Do you have any um, address where people could send some money to? And uh, you know, also this fact that you say that people have to, children have to pay for books, and if they can't pay that, the school also school fees, then they cannot have education. I think in our time, this shouldn't be 
a problem. And if the right. state is not doing it, then we should organize privately at least the people who have enough money to give away. I mean, how much is when we give away, I don't know, uh, 10 euros in other countries? It's, it's 10 times uh, the, yes, the amount. Yes, you're you right. Know? Right. So, um, do, do you have any addresses of, of organizations uh, or can you send them to me so that we can publish it and, and we can send some money? Or what, what yes, I have, I have is an Indian person, for instance, there, uh, uh, um, oh God, how is it called in English? There is a girl where I give uh, some money every, every month to, you know, uh, like like parentship, but it's not parent. I don't know in English how you say so that you take care for a certain amount of time of one person, uh, of one child until they are old enough to go out of school. Is there uh, probably in Africa too? Yeah. And so we should. Yeah, um, there is a, a house for refugees. That one, which uh, accommodated us for six years. Oh, they have many refugees, many children, and they, at the moment they don't have any assistance and it, they always fight to put children to school to put everything is terrible even if food we have to always buy those tin if food always to go to help but is never enough and they, yeah i i know also that those widow um, the widow who their children can't go to school don't work and they just have to fight. Yeah, maybe I can give you that one. Yeah, I, or give me some private people who are in the address yes. of private people and we can send them privately as some, you know, and maybe the yeah. viewer will send something too to somebody else. That would be nice that we have a list of people nice. you mm. know they are in need without needing to rely on organizations which then might take the money away you know if we can do it directly it would be yes directly would be better. Yeah, I, I don't even know if he, it, there is also a possibility for those children who have problems to school if it, they can even be deposited to their school directly it can also be better those government school which also are those are cheap one which pay yeah you can they pay like 80 US dollars or 60 euros like that. Yeah, that one also can really help. Yeah, I mean, if everybody pays school for one child is already enough. And we, I mean, even if we don't have much money in some people, also in our countries don't have much money. But I know, I know, yeah. all over. Mm. Yeah, but, but something, especially when we know that the little money we give is augmented and that's a whole lot of, of benefit to uh, people in other countries where the money is much more worth. So yeah, really do send it to me. I, I will try to promote that and maybe do some fundraising for that. That would be good. I would love that to do that. Great. That would be great. All of us, really, we put aside whatever we can. I know I don't have also enough because I'm at the moment, I'm the only breadwinner. But whatever, even if it's five dollars, you you give it to the needy because I know that is not easy. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And if, how is it going? With, oh, sorry, I was saying. I know that you do a great work. You are always. If, putting people together and is that integration. Yeah. How do you find it? It's, it's really a commitment. I've been willing, I cannot add it to you. I said it for many years and many years that I really want also to be involved in humanitarian work where I can say I have done something for someone because people did something to me. And I feel that me too, I need to do something for someone else in their lives, yeah, for other people. So they can also say, I can be grateful to what people have done to me when they didn't know me, when I have never met them. I can tell you that 
I've been helped by people I don't know. For example, there is a lady who was telling me that she's a, a nun. When I, around the 2000, she told me that she was in Germany. They are Dominican sisters. And when she, she was saying, I stay in South Africa, and she said, that nun we, we used to meet um, at church. And she said they, when they were in a train, someone said, oh, are you some South Africa? They said, said oh, uh, uh, are there some people who are suffering who I can help? And immediately that nun said, oh, I know someone, I know Caritas. And that lady used to pay um, school fees, just a small portion of school fees for my children. And also said, because we didn't have clothes, everything, she used to collect clothes from people and send them to me. And those people, I don't even know them. So that is something me too, I would really like to do and say, oh, yeah, I, 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 I can get involved. If I, you can also, whenever there is a charity things, if you can also involve me, please. Yeah, I will. And you know, yeah, uh, we can all do more of that, give something away. And if it's on a private basis, I like it even better than giving it to organizations. Yes. Uh, my work is mainly to tell people that we have to wake up, that we have to grow up, that we have to come into a different mindset. And by talking with people like you, it is uh, you know, a way to, to do that, to help people to, to hear out of firsthand what, how these experiences are. And so I'm very much for growing up, for helping people to grow up, because I think only when we change our mindset, we can resolve the problems which are on the bottom of poverty, which are on the bottom of war and, and, and civil war or whatever it is, you know, of, of uh, being enemy uno to other. We need to grow up and open our hearts in a spiritual way, yes, but it happens also when you open your mindset, when you begin to see the humanness in the other person instead of the enemy. You know, instead of, right. oh, that's somebody who looks different. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, they, they must be bad because they look different. So overcome the, the instinct, which is very in the base of humanity, that others are a danger, and to, to grow up and become more, more human, I would say. <laughs> and it was nice, the, the conference, uh, being better, doing Doing human better was the name of the conference. And I think it's yes. exactly what we need to do. And when I can contribute, I'm happy to do that. Oh, that's very nice. Thank so, you very much, Caritas, and for your time and for you your too. generosity. Mm -hmm. to I can talk. also request if you maybe the readings for how to, those making people better people. And I know what you do. I, I really want also to read and understand and the, because I, I know all of us, <laughs> we need it to be better. Yeah. To open our heart and that's open a, our hearts. It, it's the task of our lives to be open the heart and don't close ourselves into selfishness. And it's for everyone. It's not that I'm perfect in that, really not, but yeah. I, I see the necessity that this is, I'm working on it, let's say. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I thank you very much. And uh, I hope we meet again. Oh, and it was a pleasure chatting with you and uh, wishing you all the best with the great work you are doing. Thank and uh, you. thank you for this opportunity. And thank you. See, call again whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure what you were going to ask me. Maybe I should have prepared better. No, but it's fine. We'll talk I just, again. We'll I talk just again. wanted to, to have an exchange from, let's say, from heart to heart, you know? Yeah. No you. theories, <laughs> just <laughs> experience and ideas, which are our private ideas. It's not that we are representing political or whatever uh, no, uh, parties or something. It's just what we feel and what we think is needed to be said in that moment. So thank you very much. Thank you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.